Chris, this is going on page 53 when we're done. We are going to talk about parts of congruent triangles. So I first want to know just in general what congruent means. Who wants to tell me? If two things are congruent. Go ahead, Rio. Okay, in what manner? Measurements. Okay. What? Same size, same shape. That's kind of what I was going for. Because they are exactly the same and same size, same shape. Okay, so congruent in general just means same size, same shape. So to be a little bit more specific, when we're talking about polygons, we're going to talk about polygons and then specifically triangles. To be congruent polygons, they are going to, that means that all corresponding corresponding sides and angles are congruent. Okay? All corresponding sides and angles are congruent. Now corresponding doesn't mean like the corresponding angles that we had with parallel lines. Uh, necessarily, uh, that's just a different use of the word corresponding, right? Because you correspond to another student at a different table, and they're, you know, you have corresponding positions. So it's just the ones that, that would line up. Congruent triangles. Okay, so what we're going to talk about is most mostly triangles today, or actually all triangles today, but it does apply to any polygon. So to have congruent triangles, that means again that all corresponding Sides and angles are congruent. So yes, I made you write the same thing twice. That's because I want you to understand that even though we're really just looking at triangles, it applies to all polygons. Because what has to be the same is the sides and the angles, and that makes everything else the same. All right, so when we're dealing with congruent figures, we have to write sometimes something that's called a congruent statement. All a congruent statement is is a statement about congruence. That's all it is. It's this is congruent to that whatever those things might be. So if it says, make sure you write a congruent statement, then make sure you have it written out that this thing is congruent to that thing, whatever it may be. Now, these two triangles here, are these triangles congruent? We don't know. We can't tell. So that's the best way. We can't say yes, we can't say no, right? So what if I label them, and I'm going to label them like this. So go ahead and label this. Now, can you say whether or not they are congruent? Yes. Why? Okay. So each side on this triangle is congruent to each side on that triangle? Okay. So is that all that has to be true about them is congruent sides? No. And angles. So do you know anything about the angles? No. So this, still not enough information. Okay. You have to have all sides and all angles congruent at this point in time. So what if we did this? Label this. Now can I say that they're congruent? Yes, because the only way that you know how to show that triangles are congruent right now is if all three sets of sides are congruent and all three sets of angles are congruent. And it's corresponding sides and corresponding angles. So if angle A had been congruent to angle D, that wouldn't necessarily tell me anything because those aren't corresponding. You see how angle A is created by the side that has one mark on it and the side that has three marks? So it has to correspond to the angle that's also made up of one and three. Okay, so that's what corresponding means. They have to match up. So this is called um, congruence can be looked at with rigid transformations. Okay, transformations, reflections, translations, rotations, that sort of thing. So if I took this triangle and I rotated it, translated it, reflected it, whatever, I should be able to lay it right down on top of this and all the pieces match up. Okay, so all the corresponding parts, that's the important part. Okay, so then we've got to have a congruent statement. So your congruent statement is going to say that this triangle is congruent to this triangle. So when you name them, the way you name them matters. So if I start with triangle, now the first one, since there's nothing here for me to, to get me started, I can name the first one whatever I want. I think most of us would probably call it triangle ABC. That isn't, it's not the only way to name it, but you know, it's just what we do, right? Okay, is congruent to 
Now, I had free reign on that first one. I could call it whatever I wanted with those three letters. But the second one, I don't get to just do DEF just because it's alphabetical because that's what I want. You have to set up the corresponding pieces. So A comes first in this one. A corresponds to what? E. So E has to come first in the second one. And then B corresponds to what? D and then F. Okay? Everybody okay with that? Order matters. That's telling you something. Right? Whether I have the picture to get the, this congruent statement or I have the congruent statement, it's going to help me label the picture either way. Um, but so if I had triangle, say I decided I'm going to call it triangle CAB instead, then what would have to come first for the next one? A. F and then E and D. So then let's say that really I wanted to make sure that my triangle was called DEF. So if I the second one is going to be called DEF, what would the first one have to be? It'd be what? BAC. So three different answers. There's more than that, but all three of those are correct. One isn't better than the other. So, you know, just got to make sure that no matter what, that B corresponds to D, A with E, and C with F, because that's what's happening in the picture. Okay, we good? Order matters. It's important. Okay, so then let's look at example one here. So they give me the congruent statement. This is my congruent statement. It says triangle ABC is congruent to triangle FDE. Right, so I can use that to label the picture, or I can use that to answer the question before I label the picture. It doesn't matter. Like, I have to be able to do both, but what order goes in, it doesn't matter, because this name... Because since the order matters, it tells me a whole lot. A corresponds to F, which means angle A is congruent to what? Angle F. Angle B is congruent to angle D. C is congruent to E. Does that make sense to you? Then when I look at my line segments, I've got AB here has to be congruent to FD, because it's the first two letters. And then BC has to be congruent to D, E, and then A, C has to be congruent to F, E. Okay? I didn't even need the picture necessarily to figure all that out. You with me on that? Then I need to have my picture labeled. Now, whether I label the picture from the congruent statement or from what I wrote over there doesn't really matter, but I know that A is congruent to F, B goes with D, and C with E. And then AB is congruent to FD. BC is congruent to DE. And AC is congruent to FE. Now notice, does the bottom one correspond to the bottom one? No. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. You can't automatically just assume that every, you know, everything's turned the same way because it might be, but it isn't always. If you get to draw the picture, then I would suggest you do it that way because it is going to make it easier on you. But um, this is where my congruent parts are. Okay, Everybody okay with that? We good? So now let's look at this here. It says if triangle XYZ is congruent to WMN, then I'm going to determine whether the following statements are true or false. I don't need a picture. Not going to draw a picture, okay? Just going to use what's up there. Um, so, <clears throat> in this first one, <coughs> Y <coughs> here corresponds to W. <clears throat> Does Y correspond to W up here? No. So then I don't even need to look at the rest. It's false. We good? Okay, so I'm going to give you a second to do the other three on your own. Let's see, I need somebody to help me with this one. Mirabella. So for B, do you think that is true or false? True. Y'all agree with that? Yes? Okay, good. Thank you. So Z corresponds to N. That's what that says right there. Well, Z goes with N. X with W. X and W. Y and M. Y and M. So that is true. Good job. All right. So the next one. <coughs> Eric, true or false? False. Do y'all agree with that? <coughs> so, so it says that Y corresponds to N. 
y does not correspond to n, so I can stop there, and it is false. And the last one, Ellie, true or false? True. Y'all agree with that? Yes. Good. Because z goes with n, y with m, x with w. We all good? All right, so then this says, use the given inf figure and information to name the three pairs of congruent angles and the three pairs of congruent sides. So I want you to list this stuff out, paying attention to your picture here, and it's also going to need to be labeled. Put your angles right here and your side lengths right here, okay? So I'll give you a second to list those out on your own. Now, as I start to write that, I want you to finish before you look up here, but if you wrote yours in a different order than mine, you don't have to go change anything because it doesn't have to be exactly like this. <coughs> So, do you agree with what I have? What if I was to tell you this isn't 100% right? What about them? Exactly. Angle G, congruent to angle G, cannot write that. There's a lot of angles coming off of point G. It's like if I said, somebody go tell that boy at that table right there that I want to talk to him. Do you know who I'm, who I'm talking about? I don't know, there's there, there's four boys sitting at this table. I don't you know, you gotta narrow it down a little bit. So you can't just call that angle G. That's not appropriate for any of them. So this is a big fat no no. Okay. <laughs> now, could I have named these two sets with three letters? Yeah, I could have. I, I mean, but I don't have to. And if you did, it's okay as long as you did it right, but I don't have to. But there are times when you have to, and you have to know when that is, right? And that is something we talked about when we talked about angles, and you're expected to know and be able to apply now. So what I can do is call it angle E, G, H, and say that it's congruence to angle K, G, F, or F, G, K, it doesn't matter. That's how it's got to look. Okay. Here you have options. This, it's not an option. You have to do it that way. Okay, we good? Make sure you know when that's necessary. All right, so then let's look at this. Actually, let me ask you this. This, I mean, they gave us the congruent statement, right? So we already knew that all the pieces were congruent. But let's say that the congruent statement wasn't there and that I had to be able to tell that these angles are congruent. If they don't give me this, like this is here, but if they don't tell me about these angles here, would I still be able to say that I know they're congruent? Because they are vertical angles, right? So if they give me everything that I have in purple and they leave off what I have in pink, but I still need all three sets of sides and all three sets of angles, then I can say that these are congruent because they're vertical angles and vertical angles are always congruent. Then I have enough to say that the triangles are congruent. Does that make sense? So you won't always be given everything because there's ways that you're supposed to know some other stuff. Okay, so then let's just um, run through this one together. Let's go ahead and we can label it first if that's better. So in this triangle here, uh, I know that line segment AB is congruent to CD and BC is congruent to DA and then this one has to be the same. All right, so when you look at angles, and it's, you know, you got the A goes with the C. Well, there's three angles here, and there's three angles here. So if you're not sure which one it is, then 
We can go ahead and do whatever this angle is. Here's the angle A. See how it is created by the side with 1 and 3? Well, 1 and 3 over here, it is this C right here. B goes with D. And then this is my third one. Now, it is possible, depending on how the picture is drawn and what's going on, that these two here are the two that are congruent to each other. It's not always the opposite ones like that. It just depends on what, what's going on in the picture. So you can't assume that that's always going to show up exactly like that. Okay. All right, so when we go to name it, I can't call it angle A, right? But I have to name it with three letters, so I could call it, well, if I'm going to start with the first triangle, it would, I could do BAC, but D isn't part of it. BAC is congruent to angle what? DCA. For B, can I just use one letter? Yes. So since I can, that's what I'm going to do. I don't have to. I mean, you could use three letters, but definitely makes it easier not to. And then for the C part of the first triangle, I could call it angle BCA. That would be congruent to angle what? DAC. And then I know that AB, line segment AB, is congruent to line segment CD. And then line segment BC is congruent to line segment DA. And then AC is congruent to CA. Or AC, it doesn't matter. The order matters when you're naming the triangles because you got the corresponding pieces, but Line segment AC and line segment CA are really the same thing. So now when we look at this one, if I gave you all of this stuff except for this, we would still be able to say that the triangles are congruent, okay? Because AC is shared by the two triangles, right? So it has to be congruent to itself. Is everything congruent to itself? Yes, it is. Okay, so I want you to, so we can say then that line segment AC is congruent to line segment AC. But remember, we always have to have a rule that goes with it. I can't just say, well, everything's congruent to itself. So I want you to turn in your ISNs to page, I think it's page 29. You can turn there and then I'll tell you if it is 29 or not. Yeah. So on page 29, what do you have on there that you think could help you be able to legally say that AC is congruent to AC? The reflexive property of congruence. Remember, it's like looking in the mirror, right? When you look in the mirror, do you see yourself? Yes. And when AC looks in the mirror, he sees himself. But this little sh this little chart that you have, those are properties of equality, all right? We're not dealing with equality here. This is congruence. So some of the properties of equality transfer over to congruence, not all of them. But the only one we're really concerned with right now is the reflexive, and it does. So we know that this is true because of the reflexive property of congruence, not of equality, because we're not saying things are equal. It's the reflexive property of congruence. That actually comes up a lot. It's easy. It's just a way to say that something is congruent to itself. Okay? Everybody okay with that? <clears throat> okay. All right, so now let's look at these triangles. It says, using the diagram, complete the congruence statement. All right, well, we are missing um, some letters here, so let me give you where I want the letters to be. Make this D and this E. All right, so do you have enough to actually say that the triangles are congruent at this point? Do you have all three sets of sides and all three sets of angles congruent? No, because we don't know A and E. Um, are A and E right angles? We don't know. They could be. kind of looks like it, but that really doesn't matter. But can, do we have enough information to say at least that A is congruent to E? By what? Okay. And it can't be, well, because this is that, and this is, it has to be a rule, a postulate, a theorem, a definition, something. No, the third angle's theorem. So angle A is congruent to angle E by the third angle theorem. Remember, your reasoning through it doesn't get you anything. You have to have a rule, and the rule is the third angle theorem. Now, if you're going to say, if you're going to, like, um, like condense the third angle theorem, that's okay, but you would have to say, because if two angles in one triangle are congruent to two angles in another triangle, then the third angles are congruent, because that's what the third angle theorem says. 
But um, you can avoid having to say all that just by saying the third angle theorem. Now you can actually say that the triangles are congruent. And so if the first one is A, B, C, then the second one has to start with what? E and then what? D and then F. Any questions? All right, next one. It says, what information about the triangles is shown in these drawings? So that's what we're going to put in the lines, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about it. Well, basically, I'm just asking what is actually given to you? What is labeled that is just flat out obvious here? Well, we'll start with the angles. They told us that angle D is congruent to what? Angle U. And they told us that angle K is congruent to angle L. That's all they told us about the angles. Then they told us line segment DW is congruent to what? AU. And then KW is congruent to LU or UL. Either way, it doesn't matter. I don't even know, but it's fine either way. Okay, so that's everything that was given to us, right? Let's see if there's anything else, and that's really all I asked for, but if there's anything else that we could deduce from what we have. Can you can we say that W is congruent to A, the angles? Yes. Yes. So I can say angle W is congruent to angle A. How do we know that? Third angle theorem. Okay, so this is congruent to this. Now, is that enough now to say that the triangles are congruent? No, because we don't have anything for KD and AL. So can I say that KD is congruent to AL? By what? There is no third side theorem. Okay, so that's all we can actually come up with because, once again, there is no third side theorem. So, remember that I'm not saying that the triangles are not congruent. What I'm saying is we don't have enough information to prove it at this point, okay? Because in the end, the triangles are congruent. And that's something that's going to... That, that gets difficult for you sometimes is like you know it has to be well you're right it may have to be and it does have to be and soon we'll know why we're supposed to already know that but at this point based on what you have so far you can't prove that they're congruent you also can't prove that they can't that they're not so I'm not saying that they're not congruent we just can't say that they are because I can't get that side in there yet okay so that makes sense to you we good can only use what we what we've learned so far all right so then we have this example it tells me I've got triangle dog is congruent to triangle cat and gives us all this information. Now, we're going to draw and label the pictures, and we get to draw them. So since you get to draw it, it doesn't matter. We don't have any clue what it's supposed to look like, what, how, you know, how the sides or the angles are supposed to be. It doesn't matter. You're just going to draw something to be able to label. So I'm going to draw two triangles, and since you're in control of the, the diagram, then you do it the easiest way. So if I do this is D-O-G, if I name the other one the same way, in the same order, then everything will line up. The side goes with the side, the bottom with the bottom, and so forth. It makes it easy. So that means I know that angle D is congruent to angle C, O is congruent to A, D is congruent to T, and then the sides are congruent. It is nice when everything does line up the same way, and it's all turned the same way. It makes everything a whole lot easier. <clears throat> Alright, so then we label everything else they gave us. DO is 10, the length of OG is 12, and the length of DG is 16, and the length of AT is 2X plus 6. We are supposed to solve for X. So, do we have plenty of information to do that? Yes. Do we have more information than we need? Yes, yes what do we not care about and we're not going to use? 16 and 10, right? Because these are congruent, so that's very easy to set up. 2x plus 6 equals 12, so 2x equals 6, which means x equals 3. Am I done, or do I need to plug it back in? I'm done, because it says x equals, and that's it. So I'm, if I do plug it back in, what am I going to get? 12, yeah. And that tends to confuse you, because then you're like, what's well, 12? Now I don't know what to do. Well, it's because you did too much. You were done a long time ago. Okay, we good? Anytime you're, like, confused about what you're getting, you need to ask yourself if you did too much because now you're just going in circles. <clears throat> All right. 
So we're going to look at, we're going to do some very informal proof type stuff, meaning that we're not actually going to write out a two-column proof. Kind of, you know, we did some algebraic proof in preparation for this kind of stuff, but we're not even going to do a full-on proof here. What we're going to do is we're going to look at what was given to us. We're going to label all that stuff. And then we're going to figure out what else we can come up with. And it's telling us to prove that these triangles are congruent. Is it asking us if they are congruent? No, it's telling you. These are congruent. Show me why. It's like me giving you an equation and saying x equals 5. There's your answer. I looked it up in the back of the book, but I gave it to you. Now, you've got to give me all the in-between. Because the in-between stuff always means a whole lot more than the actual answer you get in the end. So, in the end, these are congruent. But I'm going to label what we have. We have DE is congruent to GE. We have DF is congruent to GF. We have angle D is congruent to angle G. And DFE is congruent to GFE. So that's everything that they gave us. Now I want you to look at how this is labeled, and then we're going to look back at this one. So on this one, where it was like two triangles stuck together like that, this angle was congruent to this one and this one with this one. They were like the ones opposite. But on this one, it's the one that's right next to it. And the two triangles are stuck together. So that's why I was saying it doesn't really matter. It's not like every time it's stuck together that the same thing happens. It's not what's happening. Okay. So I'm supposed to be able to say in the end that the triangles are congruent. The only way I can do that right now is having all three sets of sides and all three sets of angles congruent. I only have two sets of angles marked congruent. Can I say that those third ones are congruent? Yes. yes. Okay, so I'm going to label them, and then I need to make that statement. So I need to say angle. Can I say angle E is congruent to angle E? No. But I can say angle DEF is congruent to angle what? GEF. And why do I get to say that? Third angle theorem. So that's good. Now, I have two sets of sides marked congruent, so I can say the third sets of sides are congruent. Is there a third side theorem? No. But I can say that EF is congruent to EF. What's my reason for that? Good. Reflexive property of congruence. So now, I've added those two things to what they gave me. Now that's enough to say that the triangles are congruent. So now I can say triangle DEF is congruent to triangle GEF. And we know that from the definition of congruent triangles. Because the definition of congruent triangles is triangles that have all, so, all sides and all angles congruent. Okay. We good? Any questions? All that's the answer. There's nothing you can leave off there. You just you don't have the right answer. Okay, we good? Any questions? Alrighty. Then go ahead and glue that in.